All right, guys, today's video is being made completely on the fly because I have a little bit of a lull in my work day, and I figured I'd take it and do something constructive with it. i talk to you, all right? So listen up. I hope you'll, you'll enjoy this. I was working my way through a book this morning before I left for work, and um, I'm always working on about three different books at a time because it keeps reading interesting for me, and uh, I'm always reading on different topics because... Um, well, it makes for good conversations, right? You learn something new, you want to share it with somebody. It gives me a lot to think about, a lot to digest, and uh, and you grow in the process. But in this book, well, this book, this particular book I was reading is called uh, Albert Hubbard's Scrapbook. And um, Albert Hubbard was an artisan, a philosopher, and a man of many different things back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. A little bit of a strange guy. But he had some interesting things to say. Him and his second wife, they uh, they went down with the sinking of the Lusitania back in 1915 when a German U-boat uh, torpedoed it. So this goes back this far. But um, the scrapbook that he that he wrote is really not a, anything that he wrote. It's just a collection of fragments, uh, passages from books and whatnot that he. Uh, that he uh, gleaned from over the span of uh, his life in reading, and it's very good because there's so many different uh, there's so many different names in here, uh, names of uh, celebrities, playwrights, politicians, uh, authors, poets, so on and so forth, talking about anything and everything, and it, it's no, in no particular order, so you never know what you're going to read next. It just makes it kind of exciting. And it, and it fills your mind with such deep thoughts. Uh, this particular this particular uh, passage that I'm going to share with you, I'm not really going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to give you a few lines from it. But it's uh, it's it's written by a man named David Swing. I have no idea who he is. I, sh I need to Google him to find out if he did anything else of any significance. He must have because he was very eloquent in, in what he wrote here. And what he wrote on was ideals. Okay, ideals. That's something that's easy to say and know in your head what it is without thinking too much about it. It's harder to define it in, in words. So let me tell you what dictionary.com says an ideal is. It's a conception of something in its perfection. That's an ideal. A conception of something in its perfection. All right? So you have an idea in your head. You see in your mind's eye something, and you see it in its perfected state. Now, when we say perfected state, we don't necessarily mean there's no flaw in it. It just means that you have a particular way of imagining something, and that's how it should be, right? However it is, you see it is how it should be. And then, um, you know, when we talk about idealistic people, people are often referring to, like, crazy people, right? People who have pie-in-the-sky ideas, dreams, aspirations, and you know, all these they see they see the world through a certain light, and that's only you know they that's the only way they'll accept it. It's the only way they think, and we think they're crazy. We think they're crazy, but ideals are not all crazy. Everybody everybody has ideals. Everybody has a, an imagination with which they use, and we have to we have to have ideals, uh, because it gives us these ideals give us something to work for. It gives us a, it gives us dreams. It gives us ambitions. It, it spurns motivation, and um, and so it's very important to have that because it, in in essence, it really is what life is all about. Without that, what is there? What is there? What? How do we know what to strive for? How do we know how to set goals and achieve them without ideals? So. Having ideals is not wrong in and of themselves, but what I have found out that in life, so many people give up on, on their ideals. They give up on their ideals in the shape of dreams, ambitions, aspirations. They give up on them because as they get closer to the mark, the ideal, the conception, the object, the goal begins to take on a different shape, a different color, and a different hue, and, and then we are, we're oftentimes unwilling to accept it because we, we begin to think, well, it doesn't look exactly like I thought it was going to. It must not be for me. Or perhaps it's not the object itself. Perhaps the object has, the, the, the ideal has never changed, but the process in which it, which we had to be a part of to get there is something 
that was undesirable in and of itself. And we said, eh, I'm not about that. I don't have that kind of discipline. I don't want to go through that to get this. Okay. And then we end up forfeiting what could have been ours. And we, we've actually, um, sat our dreams on the sideline or we sat on the sideline ourselves. And then we've never been a participant in this game and life begins to lose purpose and, and people begin to wonder what there is left to live for. And this is what David Swing sheds light on. So I'm going to share this with you. Think very carefully. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to read it. I'm going to, I'm going to reread it just so that it, it sinks in as well for you as it did for me. Now, listen, he said the quest after ideals is the central reason of life. Did you get that? And that's not all there is, but let me read that again. The quest after ideals is the central reason of life. Now, let's go on. This pursuit abandoned, life need not run any longer. The pitcher is broken at the fountain. What an image that he is he is uh, planted here. The pitcher is broken at the fountain. When you give up on your ideals, when you give up on the quest, when you give up on the process to get there, your pitcher is broken. You have nothing left to carry your, your ideals in. Do you see what he's saying here? It's very important to remember this. You know, my son and I were talking last night. We both play the piano. He's 13, I'm 49, okay? We, but we both play the piano. But we're both playing the piano at completely opposite spectrums of life. He's in the beginning stages of it. He's been doing it for a couple of years. I've been doing it since I was five years old on and off. I know it takes a lot of work. There were times in my life I gave up on it over and over and over again because I wanted to be a particular kind of piano player, but I didn't want to do the work involved to get there because it was hard. Or... Maybe the dream looked too far off. The ideal looked too unattainable. And so I gave up on it over and over and over again. But my son, my 13-year-old son, loves the piano in a way that I never did. And I told him, I said, don't give up on it. Because by the time you're my age, you'll be so much further ahead than I could ever dream of. That doesn't mean that I'm not dreaming. And that doesn't mean that I don't have ideals now, because I certainly do. I could be playing the piano for the next 50 years. All right? So I haven't given up on my ideals. And I'm much more wise than I was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And I'm, I'm not going to give up now. You know, I've learned my lesson. All right? But if I had not given up on my ideals a long time ago, I'd be so much further ahead. So I told him, I said, be wise and do not give up on your ideals. The problem with ideals is sometimes sometimes the ideal itself is too perfect. You know, we don't consider the cost of attaining it. All right. So when you have an image in your head of something that you want, you have an idea, consider the cost of, of acquiring it. Be willing to put in the work. And if you're not, change your conception. All right. Change your perception and go after something a little more realistic. But ask yourself if you're doing it only because you don't want to work at it. Okay. Working at something is rewarding. And just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not for you. All right. So here's what he went on to say. He said, idealism is not the ravings of a maniac, but it is the calm geometry of life. Do you understand what he's saying there? Let me read that again. Idealism is not the ravings of a maniac, but it is the calm geometry of life. What he means here, if you could read the rest of the passage, you, you would understand. But I'm explaining it to you. What he means is, is that uh, having the having this ideal is not something that is wrong for you to have, and you're not crazy for having an ideal. Um. And, but working towards your ideal may be much more involved than you think. It's not about just having something. It's not, it's not about magic. It's about planning. It's about structure. It's about, uh, it's about 
sacrifice. And it's about doing what you have to do. It's about counting the cost. And it is a worthwhile endeavor. But remember, if you give up on your ideals in your quest, uh, in your quest after ideals, if you give up on them, you will not be rewarded. And you'll actually lose purpose. How many of you listening to this have actually had something you wanted to do and you gave up on it time and time again and you you threw your hands up in the air and said, I just don't know if it's for me anymore. I don't know if it ever was. Perhaps you've lost purpose and you don't need to. You don't need to. You just pick up the ball again, start where you're at and form new ideals. Account the cost, put in the work, make the sacrifices and just keep on moving, regardless of how it looks, regardless of what it takes, just keep on moving because, you know, that's how ideals are. It's how they work in the real world. In reality, this is how ideals work. Guys, I hope it's been helpful to you. I hope you've understood this. I hope I've done it justice. Uh, like I said, it was just, this is kind of impromptu and uh, I hope it's been very clear. If you've liked it, hit the thumbs up, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. All right, have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.